I'm Leanne, the Director of Education at the Squam Lakes Association. I'm glad you are joining me to explore the wonders of the Squam Lake watershed. Today we'll be learning about the northern water snake. The other day when I was headed to shore after a great time out paddleboarding, I saw something on the beach that at first glance I thought was a rope that had washed ashore. Then as I got closer, I realized it was a snake and it was enjoying a meal. The not-so-lucky fish was a pumpkin seed, which we learned all about in episode one. It's just one of the fish species that northern water snakes are known to eat. Others include smallmouth bass, minnows, other sunfish, bullhead, catfish, and hog suckers. They've also been recorded eating toads and other frogs. Pretty much, if you are a fish or an amphibian, you are on the menu for the northern water snake. If you have been out on a stream, swamp, marsh, lake, pond, or river in New Hampshire and saw a snake in or near the water, there is a very high probability that it was the northern water snake, as they are the only water snake in New Hampshire, and you won't find them very far from the water. There are 11 species of snakes found in New Hampshire, and of these, only two are likely to be confused with the northern water snake the timber rattlesnake, the only venomous snake in New Hampshire, which is also very rare, and the milk snake. If you see a snake that has a light tan Y or V on its head that points towards its tail, a black and white checkered belly, and thick red to reddish brown blotches over a gray base on its top, then it's probably a milk snake, like this one that was hiding under my fridge a few years ago when I lived in Vermont. The northern water snake can look different when it's wet or dry and sometimes appears rusty, gray, tan, brown, or even completely black. But if you look closer or the snake is wet, you can see the dark brown or grayish base color with lots of brown or black blotches or bands and their belly is colorful with black and or red half moon shapes in various patterns and arrangements, unlike the checkerboard black and white belly of the milk snake. Northern water snakes fully grown can be between two and four and a half feet long, and I'll say it again, are not venomous, but when agitated like most snakes may bite, so don't try to pick them up or bother them. While watching this snake slowly eat, I began to wonder, how can it open its mouth so wide, wider than its own body? So I did a little research. If snakes and mammals had the same jaw structure, then snakes would have to dislocate their jaws every time they ate. Ouch, that would hurt. So luckily for snakes, their jaws or mandibles are not connected the same way as ours. Snakes have a stretchy ligament at the front of each mandible, which allows them to spread their jaws apart laterally, widening their mouths, and are also only loosely connected to the skull, which allows for more rotation so the snake can open its mouth to eat things bigger than itself. They can move the top and bottom mandibles separately and also have backward pointing teeth, both which helps move the prey down. Once they have swallowed their prey whole, it's broken down by digestive enzymes. Can you see the bulge in the snake's belly as it swims away? I watched where the snake went after its meal and it headed to a downed tree along the shore where it rested while it finished digesting its fishy meal. I hope you'll share your snake photos, videos, and stories with us and stay tuned for the next episode of Squam Watershed Wonders.